Hey, what's up, y'all? I thought I'd do something a little different today and kind of go over uh, my, my hunting season this year. I thought the uh, title was a little catchy there, you know, with, with getting three deer. Uh, so anyway, I did. I got a, a 30, 46 hour, got that in the spring. Um, and then I went out to Wyoming in, in October there, late September, early October, did some bow hunting and some uh, rifle hunting out there for mule deer and antelope. I uh, got lucky with a with a mule deer out there, really nice buck on the last night. It was a lot of fun. And then uh, came back here to Michigan and did some hunting on my lease, a lot of hunting. Uh, we had a good time out there and got lucky late in gun season. I uh, had just got a new uh, a new gun this year. Actually, I got it even after the gun season opened and, and uh, was able to take my, my best whitetail buck yet with, uh, with that new gun. So anyway, um, thought I'd do a little recap here, but starting out, First deer of the year was uh, my John Deere 3046R. I ordered that uh, brand new from the factory. I uh, was able to get a lot of options on there, put on there that way that, that I wanted to have uh, to make it my tractor. Um, you might have seen some other videos that I've had out there with all the hydraulic options that are on the back side of it. Um, you know, it's grapple ready, it's plumbed up all the way to the front, got a lot of upgrades like the air ride seat and what else, LED work lights, brush guards. Um, you know, the block heater, the transmission heater, uh, some other good stuff on there too. So that was a, a pretty cool and exciting time. Uh, been had, had a lot of fun with it. It's been a really good machine so far. I've had about 50 hours on it at this point. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably gonna get another machine here next year. Uh, I'd like to try out a cab tractor, a four series. Uh, you know, so this tractor will be available for sale at some time in the future, but it's been a lot of fun. It's performed well. I drive it to, to the shop here a lot from, from my house. Um, you know, it rides well. It's, it's done everything I've asked it to. I think probably the most useful part of that tractor, to be honest, is the top and tilt function on the three point. Um, I do a lot of service work for customers and to be able to quickly attach and, and detach um, attachments in combination with the John Deere iMatch, um, or if you have any quick attach on your three point. It's, it's pretty incredible how much time and frustration it can save and you can get on and off jobs quicker that way. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's the first deer of the year right there in the spring. Uh, so then moving on, you know, I've been going out to Wyoming, uh, to the same piece of public ground out there. This is my 10th trip out there that this year and the tough, the hunting has been getting tougher and tougher. Um, you know, I, they still have quotas out there. So I, you know, there shouldn't be more hunters than there used to be, I feel like, but it just seems like there's there's hunters crawling everywhere when rifle season opens up. And so this year we, we gave it a go. We went out bow hunting uh, for the first four days. You can buy an archery stamp in Wyoming for another, I think it was 30 or 40 bucks on top of your regular tag. And then you can, you can bow hunt out there. And so we went out for, I think it was four days of bow hunting. Um, had some real tough sledding there. I thought we were going to see a lot more animals. It was, it was really weird though. It was bad weather. Um, we got on some bucks finally on the fourth day of bow hunting and uh, put a stalk on them for over a mile and a half. We were following these deer and kind of, you know, got into about 80 yards and screwed it up <laughs> as often happens. And that was our best opportunity bow hunting there. Uh, we did have another fun one though down in a draw um, on an antelope actually, which was which was strange, it was down in the river bottom and we thought uh, we had a good opportunity at it and we were stalking, we got about 100 yards of that, of that uh, antelope there and, and it had no idea we were there. Uh, it was with a doe, you know, an antelope out there and in the beginning of October they're rutting, just like, you know, the whitetails and everything else has rutting season, uh, it's, it's the rut. And so this buck had a, had a doe with her down there, just kind of off in the pack. And unfortunately, as we were doing our stock, there was a mule deer doe that we didn't see that was bedded down in there in a different area and busted us and kind of ruined the whole thing. But uh, bow hunting is, especially out there, is, is hard. Uh, there's not a lot of cover in the area we're at. I mean, there's pockets of it, but uh, good memories though. I'm, I go out there with my brother. Uh, he's been going out there with me four or five years. Now he does a lot of the photography, so um, I'll post some pictures up to him and, and there's been some that have been popping up here and there, but uh, he does a really good job. Um, he loves to be in the outdoors and, and just taking nature shots whenever he can. So I'm, I'm lucky to have him along. He doesn't do a lot of hunting himself, so there's not really competition on, on who's gonna take the shot. It's it's typically me, you know, so uh, it makes it nice that way. But started that doing that trip way back when my dad was alive. We went out there for the first four or five years and, and uh, you know, with a couple other guys too. And 
it's a good time. So anyway, um, then we switched over to rifle season and you know, that's when you see the orange dots all in the distance there, the other hunters, you know, and the deer start to move around and man, we just could not get it to connect. And uh, long story short, we just were in the hardware store one day uh, for another reason and, and somebody had come in there just a few minutes prior <clears throat> and, and said he had some land and he had a bunch of bucks that uh, were killing his trees and uh, causing some problem on his property and, and so uh, we got his number, we got a hold of him and, and uh, found the first piece of private ground that we'd ever had out there and so we were able to get set up on the very last afternoon. Um, we only got out there about two hours before dark and uh, it just all kind of came together. You know, he kind of gave us a general lay of the land and um, they hadn't been seeing these deer uh, the previous few days. So they, you know, it was a long shot if we'd even get an opportunity at them or not. But sure enough, we get set up and they're kind of coming in from way out in the fields. Uh, and the, looks like the middle of nowhere, you know, why would deer be out there? And then they're just working their way in. You know, it was a couple of really good bucks, um, at least what I consider to be a really good buck. and. Uh, and they just keep coming in and we're set up in some hay bale, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like a natural blind. Um, well, not natural, but you know, the farmer didn't put the hay bales there to be a blind. It just kind of worked out that way. And, uh, you know, came in and ended up shooting uh, one of my best, maybe my best mule deer buck ever at about 200 yards uh, with just a couple minutes to spare right before dark. And, you know, he's, he's at the taxidermist now, but that was a really fun hunt. Um, great to have my brother there too. I, I love doing things like that uh, with him. Um, as well but then anyway so that was a good time um, he's at the taxidermist you know and then my my taxidermy bill got really expensive this year I uh, was able to connect on a really nice um, approximately it was a green score you know 145 inch nine point whitetail here in Michigan on our on our hunting lease so uh, I've been hunting this uh, property for five years or so and I haven't shot a, <laughs> I haven't shot a buck out there yet I'm, I'm pretty particular. Uh, we have a lot of good deer roaming around. Uh, a lot of trail cameras that we run show, you know, we've got good stuff there. And so I, I, I'm pretty selective. Um, been having pictures of this buck since late in the summer. He's been showing up on some different food plots that we have out there and from one end of the property to the other. Uh, he's been showing up even in daylight. He's been, he's been frequenting uh, the cameras there. So it's been pretty cool. We've had a lot of history with him and uh, my hunting partner had an opportunity at him a couple weeks earlier uh, in the heart of the rut there and just wasn't able to make it come together. The deer caught wind or caught sight somehow of him and just kind of did a 180 and, and went straight away. So it didn't have an opportunity at him that way. And uh, I hadn't seen a mature buck yet while I've been on, on stand. You know, I, I've seen a lot of trail camera pictures of, of several of them. So I know they're there and I've just somehow I'm really good at picking the wrong stand. So um, anyway, so I, I was working one day late in the season. Uh, it was November 29th and uh, you know, I, I was debating, I wanted to go out all day. You know, I've been planning on going out in the afternoon and just one of those days, it was like, okay, I gotta do one more thing. I gotta do one more thing, you know? And then it got to the point dark uh, at that point in the year was I think about 545 and um, it was like 3.45 and I was like, all right, you know, I'll just get out there. You know, I still want to go. I'm, I'm only going to have a half hour drive to my lease. I'm only going to have about an hour and 15 minutes to even sit once I get out there. But, you know, anything can happen, right? At least that's what you always hear. And so I get out there, you know, I'm out of my, out of my truck at 4.15 or so and getting dressed out there and heading out to my stand, which is five or 600 yards away probably. And, uh, you know, I get to one field and I kind of look around and, and um, I don't see anything, you know, and so I walk to the field and I'm seeing a raccoon over in the far end of it before I get to the next field. He's just out in the cut corn field and, and just browsing there. And so I kind of keep my distance and, um, you know, I come up to this next field edge where I've, I've my tree stand is another couple hundred yards in there. And uh, I just kind of scan around before I go out into the field and then I see just off the property, it's actually, there's a, there's a I wouldn't really call it a neighborhood, but there's a collection of houses that are on a small private road that have five to 10 acre parcels. And there he is, you know, just right off the property edge, him and, and one other little buck that are just hanging out. And uh, I'm like, holy cow, you know, I'm like, it's making my day just seeing him finally and in, 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 uh, in real life, you know, versus just these pictures. And, you know, it's disappointing, obviously he's on the neighboring property and, uh, but you know, it, it, it was exciting enough for me anyways. And so I'm sitting there on the ground and he's actually looking right at me and uh, I'm figuring I'm busted. 
and you know I just kind of had dropped to my knees instinctively and so he can only probably see my head up but then he just kind of starts looking around like not a care in the world and um, just slowly turns around and walks away directly away on the other property still and so where I'm facing right in front of me here all to the right is a, another big cornfield and you know, I look out there and there's a doe that I haven't even noticed that's standing out there feeding. And uh, that buck is kind of walking back to be about parallel with that doe. I'm like, man, maybe he's, maybe he's with that doe, you know? And so um, I decided to get back and, and set up behind a tree, big tree, you know, I mean, we're talking 15, 16, maybe probably bigger than that diameter. So I, I can completely hide behind it essentially. And I range everything where that doe is at out in the field there, and it's about 240 yards. And you know, and I figure, well, I guess I'm just going to sit here on the ground and, and or stand actually, and uh, behind this tree and see what happens. And and that buck had disappeared, and then sure enough, here it comes. It's the f small buck first is coming out of that 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 wood line there, uh, off the property and onto to my property, uh, right by that doe. So 240 yards, and and I get my gun up and ready. I've got a, a solid rest against a tree and. And um, I had already taken a couple practice shots, you know, on on, uh, on the doe that was out there just in case. And then, lo and behold, just another minute or two later, here comes that big nine. And uh, he took a few steps out into the field, you know, and he just stood there and, you know, my shot. And heart shot, and he went about 40 yards, died right in the field. And, um, you know, I was able to do that. I used a Bushmaster 450, so they've... Um, recently implemented a law change where you can use straight wall cartridges like the Bushmaster down here in lower Michigan. Uh, first first time that uh, I've shot a deer with that, I just bought the gun on November 16th after kind of wanting one, you know, so hunting gun season had already started. I got the gun right after Thanksgiving. I went to the to the range, got it sighted in and dialed in and then was able to, to accomplish uh, shooting my biggest white tail buck ever with it. And it wouldn't have happened with my muzzle loader or my shotgun. It was too far, you know, so anyway. That's my, my three deer of the year there. Uh, that's how I got them. Um, hopefully that was somewhat entertaining. <laughs> I'm not the best storyteller, but, uh, you know, I thought I'd show a little something different here from the typical tractor stuff that you're always seeing on my channel and uh, give you a little variety. So anyway, but uh, goodforcetractors.com. If you're looking for a tractor, make sure you shop there. Uh, subscribe to our channel below, and uh, thanks for checking it out. Have a good day.